Oh my. That's my first ch toy from childhood. I've been looking at some toys and novelties which require one of those, a puff of air or wind from your mouth and with your lips pursed. And that was the first one I ever came across, simple bubble blower. And here, not long after, in my only um, part of collecting, were a number of little things that required a little puff of air by blowing through them. So the most interesting, actually, is the whistle I've only just acquired. This is an amazing bit of 3D printing. That's an actual little tiny working whistle, maybe 3D printing, and it makes a noise. Quite fierce, actually. Isn't it small? Isn't it beautiful? And doesn't it work well for something this small? Might have a little ball going around. I'll ask him to do that next time. That's beautiful. And the others are things which I typically use in balloons, but the kids often like to just pick them up and do it. One of those squeakers, which occurs in many things. Or if you want a little more exotic one, this is a big duck quack. I've got to put it right in my mouth to make it work. Oh, that's a nice noise. Very satisfying. And the last two again are very well, well this one's very well known. The siren. Sucking or blowing. I think you're blowing. And the last one of all is something I have to get from Italy. No one else seems to do it. It's got two little tones which go poop poop for the car. So those all require a bit of that stuff. So what else do we do with this? Well, to go from childhood to something much more sophisticated, we can use it to show the Bernoulli's principle, which requires a puff of air, and what actually happens is something quite remarkable. Let's try this one with the balloons first, which I think is probably the most exotic. Here's two simple balloons attached by little strings, so they're roughly on level with each other. And if I blow through it, what's going to happen? Well, if I blow that one, it goes away, and that goes away. If I blow between it, what do you think? Oh, they came together. What on earth is going on? Perhaps that's an accident. Let's try one more time. Very still. And Well, Bernoulli pointed out that when you blow hard, it creates a lower pressure, not a vacuum, but even a partial vacuum, just a lower pressure. That's a low pressure. This is normal pressure. It pushes the balloon in, and that balloon is pushed in from the outside, which has got normal pressure and they come together. Remarkable. And here's another even more exotic version of this extraordinary effect, which is very counterintuitive. It's a long tube, which if I blow it up, I can show that my lung capacity is roughly the length of this tube. There we are. That's my lungs. However, if I use a bit of Bernoulli with it, something much more remarkable. I can blow it up in pretty well one short puff. And the trick is not to put it there, but put it out, about there, and what's going to happen now is I blow hard into it, it's going to make a partial dropping of pressure, a partial vacuum, the air from outside is going to rush in and join its fella, going in the middle, so let's have a go with about here. <sighs> One breath and it's done. Isn't that extraordinary? Well done Bernoulli. Many, many magic effects from that extraordinary thing. Another thing you can do with a little puff of wind of air is to turn things on and off. It's rather like pushing with a switch, but the switch is more like a leaf. It's very, very delicate. So, for instance, here's a couple of um, night lights, or tea lamps, I call them. Let's just light one up to show that it is. This is going to work steady. Yep. And this one, I've got to turn it on first. There we are. Oh, it's turned off again. Put it down very gently. So we've got two little tea lights, and you get kids to blow them out, and they'll go for the first one, and they'll go for the second one. I then tell the kids, well, if you blow very hard, it might turn on again, so they'll uselessly of course, but this one here will turn on and then turn off because it's electronic. It's like a little switch. Very sweet, very charming, and certainly fool the children when they first come across this. And there's a very exotic version of this same principle, which is this wonderful card from Japan, which requires a breath to finish it off. It's a very, very extravagant looking birthday card, and when you turn it on, it's going to play a charming happy birthday tune, first of all. Let's do this. Ooh, look at that grand. Ooh. 
And now the candle's lit and you've got to blow it out. Well, the blowing point is just there. So if I blow and pretend I'm blowing there, we'll do a bit of a puff. Oops. It blows the candle out and the Japanese children all shout, or something, which is whoopee, hooray, or something or other, and they clap. And that's absolutely charming. I'll do it one more time to show its lovely effect. And that's the blowing point just there, where you have to with your mouth. And you've got to blow just... There they go, yeah, or something. Anyway, it means hurrah, hooray, and happy birthday to you. Very nice version of the same effect. And the last item is the one I really got this assembly to show, was my favourite toy, which means my latest toy, of course, which is this extraordinary lighter called an element lighter, which requires some exotic stuff with it. This is a cigarette lighter, and since I don't smoke cigarettes, all I can do is light other things with it. But it's very well made. For a start, you've got to put it in for about an hour into a USB socket, because there's a secondary battery inside. Inside is nothing much, just a sort of coil effect. But if I blow in that, it's going to light for five long seconds to give you time to get your cigarette and light it. So let me just demonstrate. <laughs> there we are, glowing away like that. There's a red LED of lighting as well, but I'm going to show you now that it is actually hot in there, and after five seconds, it fades. It has to, otherwise the battery would run down very quickly and you have to recharge. This one, you could keep this on for ages and it wouldn't matter because there's so little draining current, but this has got a big draining current. So to make it light something a little exotic, I'm going to put some flash paper, they call it, this sort of flash wool here, into it. And first of all, I'll just put it in there, but it's going to burn my fingers, so I'm going to hold it with a pair of tweezers. And then we're going to light it. That's flash wool. Here we go. Wow! Amazing, isn't it? I'll do a little bit of flash paper, which all that does is to burn quickly, but it doesn't flash, but the last bit will flash. So once again, that's off, and I put it in with it off, no harm done, nothing lights, it doesn't light because it's not on. When I light it, I'll curl it a little bit more to make it sure I can get in there. Now I'm going to light it by a puff, and then light it. It doesn't actually light the paper. Oh, well, it's burning it. Well, that's flash paper for you. It needs more of it. The last one works very well, though. Let's try this one, which is a bit of flash wool. This goes almost as quickly as the, as the, as the very light cotton, but not quite so. So for the last time, I've got to turn it on. That's safe at, safe at the moment, just by touching it. It's not doing anything. But if I then turn it on by a little puff of air, <laughs> then, ooh, that's remarkable, isn't it? All done with a bit of that. An extraordinary thing. I've got a feeling that I've got to find some other things in my collection which need just a, a quick blow of air from the mouth. There must be a few more with different principles of what I'm looking for, but that's a jolly good start. And this one, well, it's just my latest toy, so it's my favourite toy. It lights cigarettes, and what they, they don't call it um, windproof, they call it flameless, a flameless lighter, because there's no flame in there, it's just a glowing, a glowing bit of metal, which is like, like a filament of a bulb. And it's remarkable how well it works too. What a treat to buy.